my name is Birdburn and today we are talking about compositing, but more specifically, the hue and saturation node. I'm pretty sure most of you have tried it, opened it, and were like, what the heck is that node? I don't get it. Well, I get it, okay? It is a very confusing node, but I'm here to help you out, okay? So, hue and saturation node, what does it do in life? The hue and saturation node is there to edit the hue and saturation of whatever you connect to it. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this yellow porcupine and I will try to make it blend more into the background. However, this porcupine was painted in the background. It's not on its own layer. Um, it's just part of a bigger background, but I, but what if I want this to be less bothersome in the scene? Like I want it to be more subtle. Then I can take my hue and saturation and shift my yellows to be more green, for example. In most software, usually when you use hue and saturation, you take like the whole layer and you shift it, or you take your whole picture and you shift it. In Harmony, in that case, uh, in this specific node, it can work for your whole scene, but it can also target specific colors, which is what we're gonna see in a moment. So why use hue and saturation? In Harmony, if I want this <laughs> character to become yellow or green, I can just take the palettes and, and change the color palettes, or I can use a color override and, you know, switch the color. So why would I need a hue and saturation? Hue and saturation is great because it's gonna work with everything. Bitmap image that you import in Harmony, a vector drawing that you draw in Harmony, or just bitmap drawings that you made in Harmony as well. It's gonna work with everything. So your vector characters or your bitmap imported image. In that case, that's perfect because I, I can't shift that color because it's not a palette. It's just painted in my image. So that's why I'm gonna use the hue and saturation node, okay? So to get it, very easy. If you have Harmony 20 and more, you can just press enter and find it in your node view. If you don't have that, you will have to go to the node library and look for it. It's just more convenient to be able to press enter and find this lovely hue and saturation node. And then to use it, you just press alt and you slide it under the image that you want to affect. In my case, it's my background. And um, yeah, don't forget to go into render, otherwise you're not gonna see any difference. And yeah, let's open this node. Boop. First off, when you open it, you're like, what is this? Nothing makes sense, it's weird. There's so many tabs and it's confusing. And why does this one has a bonus and not the others? And why is there a rainbow there as well? First off, what I like to do with the hue and saturation to make my mind feel better is to make it larger, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the master and here I'm gonna take this little thingy and I'm gonna make it larger just so that I see all my tabs. Just like that, it makes it look a lot less intimidating, okay? And then what is that note? How does it work? First, if you want to learn how this node works, you have to go to the documentation and check it out. Here, I got it for you. If, and if I don't forget, it's probably gonna be into the YouTube description, but let's be honest, I'll already forget. But you can just find hue and saturation node, and it's going to tell you a lot about how it works. So if you're gonna use it, read that thing. My video is just an introduction, but you might be confused after still. So read that, it's gonna help you, it's fun, it's beautiful. There's images, I like images in my guides because because it's great. Okay, so hue and saturation, how does it work? Like I said, it can be used to shift your whole image or it can be used to shift specific colors. It can also be used to colorize. Okay, so master, red, green, blue, cyan, magentas, and yellow, and whatever that is. Let's not talk about this one. So just the colors, and um, they all have the same thing here. So we're gonna see that last. I'm just going to focus first on the master and this specific zone it has because it's the easiest. The colorize zone, what it's gonna do is, is, is it's gonna take whatever image you connect to it, turn it like grayscale, and then apply a color to that grayscale value. Um, to choose what color, you can be crazy and write the numbers here, or you can just make your life easier and, and you know click on this rectangle here and get a color picker, which is gonna give you a hue, and it's also gonna give you the lightness of your color. So the more to the right, the lighter, so the more white, and then here is the more black then you don't see anything, okay? And you can also change the hues that you choose right here. This is really cool. Kind of gives me a Lion King vibe. It's like, oh, I just can't wait to be king. It's not the best thing ever because it can make your image look very flat. So that's why we usually will prefer to shift the colors on their own because it gives you a bit more control. But, you know, if you're in a hurry, if you just want to turn something another color, then colorize is great. Very simple. And then you have the other zone, so that little zone here. How does it work? So if I take my master here and I shift it, now you're gonna get even more of a Lion King effect. Because if I go and shift it, it's going to change a lot. But instead of colorizing the image, it's gonna shift the hue of all of those colors uh, differently. So that is a very cool, <laughs> oh, I just can't wait to be king <laughs> effect. And as you can see, all these have the curve button. So if you go in your timeline, you can always animate those. So it's very cool to use the hue and saturation node to kind of give a very funky look to your image. You might or might not want to interpolate it. You can also have it move very, very sharply. And it's a very cool node to use. Okay, but how do you use that? It's confusing. Maybe the numbers don't speak to you and you get confused. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to do a very cool trick. You see that little rainbow here? It's a button. 
Yes, it's a button. I know it's completely unintuitive, but um, it is a button. You can click on it and whoop, it gives you this beautiful rainbow. But then it is also not intuitive because I'm like, what do I do with that rainbow? Like, do I click on it? What is it? So I'm here to explain it to you, okay? I'm gonna take it, put it here just so that you can see what we're gonna do. And basically, this little thing is kind of like a visualizer of the effect. <laughs> so the top rainbow is your original colors and the bottom rainbow is how you change them. So if I go here and I write 100 to shift my hue, it means that what was a turquoise or like greenish will now become purple-ish. What was blue will now become red and what was uh, yellow will now become turquoise or whatever. Which is why my background has turned pink-ish and my porcupine has turned blue because he, the porcupine was yellow and now it became blue. And that's what it shows you. Then if I play with the saturation, it will also change how my um, image looks. Saturation can go into the minus as well, don't forget, as well as the lightness. Now it's at zero, but if I write 50 more lightness or minus 50, it's also going to shift my colors and this is gonna show you the result. Okay, so I'm gonna set it back to zero. And now I'm gonna do what I wanted to do before. I'm gonna go to my yellows and I'm gonna shift them, but whoa, what happened to the picker now? It has buttons now, but like, can I, can I click them? Because you know, the masters didn't have anything, but, but the yellow one does, and actually they all do, by the way. So maybe you caught on what it does now. Yeah, yeah. So these little sliders are selecting your zone of influence. So the master doesn't have them because it influences everything, but the yellow one has them. So, and you know, all the colors have them. So it means that the zone between the two big markers is going to be the zone that is 100% influenced by whatever you put here. And then the, the tiny slider is the fall off. So it's gonna be, this is 100%. And then this is going to make a fall off of your uh, selection. It makes it makes it very uh, useful for some colors that are more subtle like from red to pink eh, it's a bit hard to pick it out and stuff but you can see here like with the blue and purple it's usually a bit more easy but you can still give it a nice fall off so i want to choose this and now if i shift my hue by 100 for example um it means that my yellows now are going to be turquoise if and i can change that fall off i can also change the selection to include more colors or less color and um yeah, so okay, that's kind of how you do it. If you make the selection too big, then you kind of lose the point of making it by color. But you know, it's something you might want to do. Um, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna lower the saturation a little bit. And maybe lower the likeness, who knows. And that's how you would edit your image. So your yellows will now become like this, okay? Um, if you want to do that. What you can also do with that human saturation node is to give it a drawing. Of influence so now it's affecting my whole image but if I do this now it's going to affect nothing until I go on that drawing and I draw and now it's going to affect only what I drew on so that is a mask that you could use you could use anything as a mask I just put a drawing but you could put literally everything in this um, sky is the limit but yeah so don't, don't forget that the hue and saturation is usually a single port node but if you want you can transform it into a double port node for your convenience. All right, so that's it for the Hue and Saturation Note. I hope that you liked this little introduction and that it's going to be very useful in all your productions. Have a nice day.